start to record today. The other thing we do with all of our recruiting classes that we'll have here, guys, is all of your classes will be video recorded so that you guys can rewatch them uh, whenever you guys have questions or want to take a second peek at something, you're always going to be able to do that. Now, let's get started. We got our Football Recruit 101 tonight class, guys. This is really our entry level talking about the very basics of football recruiting. But since this PowerPoint is going to be sent back to you guys in the video recording, no need to take notes right now, but one of the things we will do is we will do a little questions and answers question and uh, answer section at the end of our video call today, guys. So if you think of a question, put it down on the side, and then when we get to the questions and answer section, we can address them as we come about there. All right. So guys, let me first give you my background. So guys, my name is Brendan Albert. I'm one of the head recruiting coaches here for MCSA. Uh, my background, I grew up in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, just north of Philly. Had opportunity to go to Temple University, which is a Division I football program there in the great city of Philadelphia. Uh, fair served a recruiting coordinator and an NFL Combine prep coach at IMG Academy, helped IMG Academy build their program from the ground up. After that, started hooking up and working with NCSA, started coaching in Indiana, Carmel High School in Indiana to be specific, a little bit now out here in Las Vegas and Coronado High School. Now to my quick background, guys. Come on, guys, let's get rocking and rolling and talk about what we're going to do tonight. So game plan for our class tonight, guys. First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about division levels. I think that's really important because most people, they're really knowledgeable about division one and then not knowledgeable about the other divisions. And that's kind of foolish because there's actually a larger quantity of school in the lower divisions of college football. And in all likelihood, that's where most student athletes will play. So we'll make sure we do a good job tonight, guys, reviewing that. Then we're going to talk about visits. This year is a really, really common thing. Maybe some of you guys are getting game day visits. We'll talk a little more about what those mean and how to get into them, how excited it should be really be getting. National Signing Day. This is a little more prevalent for the springtime, but we'll make discuss so you guys are familiar with what that term National Signing Day is. No gauging coaches' interest. If you guys have had the opportunity to connect with a college coach, you probably know it can be a little hazy. You know, they can say a lot of words but not say much of the substance a lot of times. So we'll talk about how to gauge their interest. And then we'll cap things up with that questions and answer section. All right, so let's get started, guys, and let's talk about all the different divisions here. So we'll start off with our big boys, and we'll work our way down. So at the top, Division One A college football, also known as the FBS, stands for the Football Bowl Subdivision. 128 schools here, guys. The thing to know about the FBS, they are the only division that could be full ride athletic scholarship. And I'm going to repeat that back. This is the only division of college football that can offer you the full ride athletic scholarship. So it's extremely competitive. Less than 1% of high school students are actually going to have the opportunity to play the Division 1A level. So here, you need to understand, guys, this is a multi billion dollar with a B, $7.3 billion in TV rights just for the last three playoff games alone. So you go here. You are every bit expected to act the part and represent the brand of that university. These schools do not play. You've got to make sure that academically we're qualifying to get in. And then, of course, we make sure we're not doing anything foolish off, off the side because these schools have no room for error. So if you do something that doesn't represent their brand the right way, boom, yawn. They won't think twice about it. But Division 1A, quick recap here, only division of college football that offers that full-ride athletic scholarship. 128 of these programs across the country. Now, peak here, timelines, okay? Coaches can make these offers as early as 8th and ninth grade. I know a couple years ago, Lane Kiffin, who's now the head coach at Florida Atlantic, when he was head coach at USC, he offered a 7th grader. So the offers can start as soon as, you know, you're really playing middle school football. Now, that said, most of these offers are going to be made during the junior year. Junior year is really the heaviest, especially and this into that summer of going into senior year. That's our big time for Division I-A offers. We might see some Division I single offers made in the senior year, but not often. If we're not talking with a Division I-A program or an FBS-level program, guys, during senior year, it's probably not going to happen. We're probably not going to be a Division I-A player. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's a good indication of typically when we see these coaches making their offers. Now, map. To peek here at the map, we can pretty much see that just about every state in the country has at least one Division I-A program. Some have several, like Pennsylvania, California, Florida, Texas, Washington, Oregon, Illinois, Indiana, et cetera. But if we look here at Montana and Dakotas, 
they don't have any. Now, I know a lot of you guys probably aren't from these areas, so you're thinking, well, maybe that doesn't affect me. It might affect you right now for the Division 1A level, but keep an eye on your state and keep an eye on your neighboring states, the opportunities around you. Because, guys, the geographic area you live is going to affect what type of quality of opportunities you have very largely. All right? Division 1A level. Now, we pass our Division 1A level, folks. We get Division 1 AA schools. Division 1 AA, also known as the FCS, Santa the Football Championship Series. Key thing about these schools, 63 athletic scholarships, and they're going to split those 60 scholarships up based on playing time to their student athletes. Guys, this is not a step down in competition. These are not the safety schools. That's just, it couldn't be further from the truth. Perfect example, North Dakota State last year, they played Iowa at Iowa when Iowa was the number nine team in the country, and North Dakota, North Dakota State beat them pretty good. So this is really good football here. 124 of these schools, so there's less Division I AA schools in the country than there are Division I single A schools in the country. Now, the Division I AA schools, as I mentioned, they have those 63 scholarships split based on playing time. So Carl Wentz of the Philadelphia Eagles starting quarterback is a great example. When he North Dakota State as a starting quarterback, he was getting a full athletic scholarship. But with freshmen, he was third string. He wasn't as large of a scholarship. So understand that a scholarship is tied to playing time. Other things to know about Division I AA's. If you are someone looking for high academic schools, Ivy League schools in the Pioneer are non-athletic scholarship schools. So these schools do not offer athletic scholarships. So that's something you need to be aware of when you look into those type of programs. Schools here with their timeline, about 50% of their offers are going to be made before the senior year. 50 chance we'll get some offers during the senior year, but that only happens if we're talking with Division I AA schools during the senior year. If we're talking with Division I AA schools during the senior year, probably going to happen as well. Division I AA schools are very, very hot topics and hot spots for transfers and junior college players here, too, as well. Okay. Here are the maps. If you're Division I single A, we saw that pretty much every state in the country had at least one Division I single A. Not so much here. We can kind of see Division I double A's start to get a little heavier in the northeast and the east coast. West coast starting to spread out a little, little bit. So that's an important thing for you guys to kind of keep your eye on, again, where your state is and where your neighboring states are. Division II programs. NCAA Division II schools. 169 Division II schools. So just based on quantity alone, guys, you have better quantity of opportunities to go and play in a Division II school than you do at a Division I school. Just is a good thing to kind of keep your eye on here. Especially your West Coast family, only six west of Colorado, and there might be only five by the things all said and done. One of those schools is currently in a financial deficit in Humboldt State, California. Yeah. I love a college football here, too, though. NFL team has a Division II level pro player on their roster. So if that was the goal for you guys, don't worry about the division level. The NFL is going to find you. If you can play football, the NFL will draft you and will, and will have you a part of their team. At University, for example, Division II school in Ohio had 36th overall drafted player in the NFL draft this past year, then got drafted by the Chicago Bears. So if you want the NFL, good football division levels. Now, these two schools have 36 athletic scholarships. So they do have less money to split up. So there goes 36 athletic scholarships up based on playing time to their student athletes. And then you're going to see most of this recruiting going on during the end of your junior year and into your into heavier senior year as well. Look here at the map for our Division II schools. Pretty evenly split out, spread out unless you're someone like Louisiana. No Division II schools. Florida, only two Division II schools in state. California, only two Division II schools in state. In fact, guys, look here on the West Coast. Look west of Colorado. A lot of Division II opportunities for, for you. If you're a West Coast student athlete and we'll start reaching out to Division II schools, it's very likely you will get missed because there's a lot of Division II opportunities. Versa, if you're someone from the Northeast, like myself growing up in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania had 17 Division II schools in state. So again, on your geographics, guys, will impact what type of quantum opportunities are in your backyard. Finally, the NCAA is going to be our Division III football programs. Division III football programs, 248 of them. So there are almost there are more than 100 Division III programs than there are Division I single A programs. 
program. So guys, just based on quantity alone, much better opportunity for us to go to a Division III school than a Division I-A program. Very high academic universities are in these E3s. Find schools like University of Chicago, MIT, John Hopkins, uh, just to name a couple here. These schools, there's no athletic scholarship they're giving out to them. It's only going to be academic and need-based scholarship. This recruitment is going to take place during your senior year. And guys, finish strong academically. I promise you what's going to happen, whether you're a senior now, junior, or younger, when you get that senior year, a bunch of buddies are going to get to that senioritis kind of stage where they're really going to care and kind of go through the motions. You be one of them. Because if we end up going and being a Division three recruit, your GPA is going to be a massive factor in determining how much you pay for school. So understand, guys, Division three schools, as a recap, 248 Division three schools throughout the country, which is the most of any division level, no athletic scholarships for them, very high academic universities. And peak here at the, on the map, spread out. So if you're in that Midwest area, in the Dakotas, Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas, Utah, New Mexico, Idaho, Montana, Nevada, Arizona, even Southeast, Florida, for example, no Division three opportunities in your state. So if you're a student athlete living in one of those states, Understand, guys, if you really want to play college football and we end up being a Division three level recruit for whatever reason, probably you're going to need to travel a little bit. Okay. LA is Division one, Division one AA, Division two, and Division three. Now, separate governing body, opposite of the NCAA. They're called the NAIA. It stands for the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. This level, they kind of fit right in between Division two and Division three players. There are 89 of these programs throughout the country, and they're heaviest in the Midwest, Southeast, and in the Pacific, Pacific Northwest. These schools here have 24 um, scholarships. And what they'll do is they'll take those 24 scholarships, again, and adjust it, split based on playing time. Most of this recruitment is going to take place during the back half of your senior year, so that's something important to know about these guys here. Very simply recruiting rules. These schools are interested in you, they can reach out to you. That's a big difference between the AIA and the NCAA schools. And here at the NAIA map, pretty much all those states I just rattled off where there wasn't Division three opportunities and not a lot of Division twos. that's kind of where we see the NAIA schools the heaviest. So remember I talked about how Florida doesn't have any Division three opportunities, only Division two. They have four NAIA schools. Take a look at the Northeast. If you remember earlier slide, guys, you can see the Northeast, there was that many D2s and D3 schools. Now there's no NAIA schools present there. So NAIA, they kind of are going to go geographically where the Division II and Division III football programs are. That's it for four universities. I want to talk quick about junior colleges. So junior colleges is a place where you go for two years, then your associates and transfer out. 163, or 134 junior colleges throughout the country. That's right, guys. There are more junior colleges in the country than there are Division I single-A programs. Keep that in mind. Now, look at where these schools are located. Nine of them are located in California. So California, while it didn't have a ton of Division II and Division III opportunities, loaded with junior colleges here. Very simple recruiting rules. If they want you, you talk to them. At junior colleges, they do not require the ACT or the SAT for you to be eligible. You just need to graduate high school. 24 athletic scholarships, which they are able to share amongst their student athletes, but they're going to give it to their in-state students first. So if you are a student athlete growing up in Texas and you want to go play in a junior college in California, you are less likely to get a scholarship from that school than you would be at a junior college in the state of Texas. Okay? Junior colleges, though, great opportunity for you to go. My personal recommendation for junior colleges is you want to explore them if you're a student athlete who's maybe been hurt your junior and senior year and don't have any varsity tape. Maybe academically you didn't have the grades to get accepted to one of those universities. Have the opportunity of, hey, we were the backup quarterback to a guy who was a four-year starter and he went on and played at Texas and we never had the opportunity to play. Colleges though, guys, typically the level of recruitment you are getting going into junior college is look at the level of recruitment you get coming out. You don't usually see a student athlete go into a junior college as a Division three recruit and come out and all of a sudden Alabama's offering him. Not super common. While it is possible, I would not bet on that, guys. Now, I'm going to kind of pause really quick here, guys, because I know I'm kind of talking a lot. So, do a favor, in the chat box, just let me know if you're still with me. 
So just give me a shout out what your favorite NFL team is. Zach, I, I give you a shout out for saying go Eagles. So go with me, shoot me in the chat box, favorite NFL team, just so I make sure I'm not putting everyone to sleep. Man, shout out to you, man, for admitting you're a 49ers fan. Good for you, buddy. Cody Lions, Taylor, Broncos. Favorite teams in New Orleans Saints. Okay, cool, cool. Off Giants fan in here, okay. See Texans. Awesome. Oh, cool. We got another Saints fan. Awesome. Perfect. Back back Falcons fans. Perfect. Okay, cool. All right, let's let's hop back in and let's kind of keep rocking and rolling here. So let's talk a little bit more about timelines here for each division level and and each year of your high school. Again, I'm going to share this video recording with you, but this is going to be an outstanding page for you guys to screenshot in print or just put it up on the fridge. It's a good thing to kind of have for your personal records. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to talk about each division level going down and talk about grad year going or going going down, and we'll talk about division levels going across. All right, talk about Division One football programs here first, okay? So Division One football programs during sophomore year. Here. Only thing they're really allowed to be doing right now is sending those camp brochures, mass, mass invitations. So that's inviting you to a camp, sending some information about the football program, the university. That's all those big Division One schools are allowed to be doing during your sophomore year. Now, when we get to our junior year, Division One schools have two different dates split up. That's important to know. First one is going to be September 1st. So September 1st of your junior year, Division One coaches are allowed to have any written communication with you, text message, email message. Handwritten letter, direct messages on Twitter, uh, mail letter, all that type of stuff, guys, that has letters written down, that can start after September 1st of your junior year. It's a good start of interest. It's a good opportunity for us to know these college coaches acknowledge that we exist and know we're out there, but it doesn't definitively mean we're definitely going to get an offer from them. A best sign of interest, guys, is going to come April 15th through May 31st of your junior year. Now, the April 15th through May 31st of your junior year, this is when our big Division I schools are allowed to pick up the phone and call you. It's also when these big Division I schools are allowed to visit you. So, Meyer at Ohio State is really interested in you. Typically, he or someone on his staff will visit you during that April through May time period, meet you in person, make sure they feel for you. Then they'll meet the high school coach. Hey, coach, is there anything going on, Brendan, off the field we need to worry about? No? Great. Meet the counselor. Ms. Adelsberger, is there anything academic we need to be able to know about Brendan? Is he a qualifier academically? Great, 3-5 student with a 27 on the ACT, fantastic. As long as you check all of those boxes, guys, and of course you have the skill, that's why we see the April through May time being so heavy for Division I recruitment. Most college coaches, they don't want to put a $100,000 scholarship down on the table for you unless they met you and your circle around you to make sure you're a good academic and athletic student. That's during the junior year. Now, junior year for Division I schools. After September 1st, once per week, these big Division I schools are allowed to pick up the phone and call you, check in on you, see how the season's going, see how things are going with mom, make sure academically you're doing everything you need to. After, after uh, July 1st, before your senior year, off-campus contact is allowed to start. So that's when these schools are allowed to visit you at home, meet mom, meet dad, brother, sister, grandma, grandpa, grandpa who's in the picture there for you guys. And initial visits. This is where the school is going to pay for you to travel to that school and pay the lodging, the meals, transportation, and that's allowed to start after the first day of classes for your high school. But we'll talk more about visits later. Big Division I schools, Division I A and Division I AA have the same rules. When we get to our Division IIs. Division schools, during the sophomore year, only allowed to send you general recruiting mail. Nothing really specific, very similar to Division I, just very, just very, uh, sporadic things sent to you. Division two schools, once for June 15th of your junior year, they're good to go. After June 15th, they can call you, text you, hang out you, visit you. They can do anything they really are able to after June 15th of your junior year. The senior year, all go from our Division two schools as well. Division three schools, the NAIAs, they really have the simplest recruiting rules. Pretty much contact you almost anytime they want, whenever they want. However, we'll see our Division II, Division III, and NAIA schools typically wait. Perfect example. Six 
guys. They had a full ride offer to go to the University of Michigan, never pay a dime, or go to a school like West Florida, a Division II school in West Florida, and pay $7,000 out of pocket. Who would you go to? I bet you guys are going to say, I'm going to go to Michigan for free every single time, Coach. And I understand that. For these Division II, Division III, and NAIA schools, they know they have no chance of trying to out-recruit Division I school. So why we see our Division II, Division III, and NAIA schools kind of sit back, wait Division I schools are done with their recruiting during the junior, early senior year, and then we see the Division II, the Division III, and the NAIAs really get aggressive with you during the senior year. All right, mentioned the word visits, guys, and I want to kind of dive into the uh, the big differences between visits and, uh, and next page. <clears throat> Stop there. There, okay, so we have unofficial and official visits. Let's go official here first. Unofficial, you guys can schedule them whenever you want. What means the, what the unofficial word means is you, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, big brother, little brother, sister, guardian, whoever the case is, you are financially responsible for the trip meals, travel, lodging, etc. You guys take these when you want, and they're really not great signs of interest. This also includes game day invites. So as I talked about it, game invites are becoming so common. Coaches are sending these tickets out at pretty at random. It doesn't necessarily mean we're a great sign of interest. To start doesn't mean we're definitely going to get recruited by Penn State just because they offered us a game day invite. Now, flip side of the official visits. Official visits here, okay? Officials are a great sign of interest. Now, this is going to come during your senior year. As you're aware, it's very inappropriate for you to ask a coach about an official visit because an official visit is when the school is going to pay for your meals, lodging, transportation, et cetera. You don't ask them. It just makes you come off very, very inappropriate here, okay? But the key to know is if we are a Division I student athlete, you only can take five official visits during your time in high school. Two vacations. So if you know in your heart of hearts, hey, I don't want to go to a small private school, then, then don't go and take an official visit to the University of Miami, okay? So make sure you research these schools ahead of time and you know what these schools are like before you use one of those five official visits. Now, if you end up going to a Division II, Division III, or NIA school, you have unlimited official visits you can take. Only thing to be aware of is a lot of times these Division II, Division III, and NAIA schools, they might not have the budget to help you financially take these visits. Visits. So don't be surprised if these schools don't offer you an official visit. Don't take any offense to it. It just might mean the university here doesn't have the funding to do it. Okay. All right, let's talk about scheduling unofficial visits. So let's say you're really interested in scheduling an uh, unofficial visit here at Trinity University in San Antonio. Awesome. Different things we want to do. Step one, we want to complete the recruiting questionnaire. Recruiting questionnaire, guys, you can easily find online by typing in the school's name, so Trinity Football, and then type the recruiting questionnaire after it, hit search on Google, and more often than not, you're going to be able to find it. Recruiting questionnaires are crucial, guys, because that's how these universities get all your contact information, so that it, A, they know you exist, B, they can have your film to evaluate you, and C, have the information to how they can follow up and contact you. So recruit questionnaires, step one, you have to do it. Step two, let them an email. Now, don't get frustrated, guys, when we send them an email if we don't hear back. These coaches are really busy. Their priority is obviously to win games more so than set up unofficial visits. So don't hear back. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone and give them a call. Now, you get through email. We get through phone calling. We have any luck. Don't stress it. Try to reach out to the school's admission office. A lot of times, the admission staff, they're actually able to set up these visits, express interest in playing college football for them, and a lot of times, they'll be able to kind of play the role of a middleman and help setting up that visit for you. Now, interest is something I think we are going to need to really perfect by the time we graduate high school. Even as a senior, you're going to go through it and you're going to say, I don't know how seriously a coach is interested in me. Completely normal, guys. So these two kinds of columns I think are really nice things for you to look at. What's the unclear? So unclear, hey, I've gotten a, a camp brochure here from LSU, and I've actually had requests for game day visit from USC. Start, but not huge sign of interest. What should we do? Send him an email. Follow up with the coach. Ask the coach if he's had the chance to view our film. Get some feedback. And if we can't do that, try to pick up the phone and give, give the coach a call. If the coach is interested in us, he's going to connect with us on one of those mediums. And that's signs of interest, or likely signs of interest. This is come from personal email. Hey, Brad, I saw you had a great game against Easton, had 10 tackles, one second, 
two tables for loss. Good luck next week versus Emmaus. Awesome. Send personal email. I know for a fact this coach is really sincere and interested in me. So interactions. He shot me a DM before my games, wishing me luck. He shot me a DM after my ACT, asking me how I did. Just check in on me. Always good. Following me. Hey, pick up the phone, ask how my grades are coming along, if I have any spring workout plans, things like that. They be straight up, hey, Brendan, we see you as our second string free safety on our board right now. Right now, we don't. We have all of our offers out. You're one of our guys that we really are seriously interested in, but right now we don't have an offer for you. Or they officially made me a visit. Hey, Brendan, we're going to pay for you to fly out here to Stanford. We're going to pay for your lodging. We're going to pay for your meals. We're going to pay for your family to join you. And then, of course, they're officially going to offer me a scholarship, which is really the best type of opportunity, of course, for clear sign and interest. This kind of poll here, guys, I think is a really cool thing. And this is very similar to like I talked about with that infographic about, hey, this is a great page to screenshot and print it. Or again, when you get the video recording of this call, you can pause it at any time and you can, you know, print this page. But the coach's interest level here is just awesome. This allows you to kind of track where you are with each school. And I think it's a really good thing for you to do once a week. You know, have a school you're staying in contact with kind of at this and move it up the totem pole and see where, where a school is so you have a good idea of exactly how interested uh, East Stroudsburg is in you versus California Lutheran, for example. All the big talking points that I wanted to make sure I hit off with you. So the rest of the call is yours. You guys are welcome to uh, take off if you want. I recommend you stick around because someone might ask a question that you didn't even know to ask. So guys, fire away in that chat box. And where can we find this recording? So, Zach, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to send you a follow-up email here that's going to be uh, recording in it so you can rewatch it then. So how do we save these slides if we want to go back and look? So, Taylor, in that follow-up email I'll send you, you'll have that recording so you can go back and look at all the slides that way, too. You're welcome. I was able to help. So only D1 colleges offer full scholarships. Now, Jaden, that's that's a trick question because of the word ring. Only Division One A programs offer the full ride athletic scholarships only. Division Two, Division Three. The Division One AA, Division One, all of these schools can offer academic scholarships. So it is still possible for you to go to a Division Three school on a full ride, but it's based off of academic and need based, not necessarily based on athletics. I hope that's there, Jaden. Matt, what should you do if you get an official visit and cannot make it? Uh, first off, Matt, that's awesome to hear. Just follow back up with the coach. Hey, coach, unfortunately, I'm unable to attend this official visit. Can we reschedule for another weekend? It's going to be acceptable for you to I'll let the coach know. So I'll be able to answer some of your questions. Brand, what if you're, what's your junior year, you play one position and the coach is interested, but switch positions, will still be interested? Absolutely, Brandon. I saw a really cool study the other day that, that on Sports Illustrated that said the NCAA had 60% of student athletes play a different position in high school their senior year than they play their freshman year in college. So it's completely normal for you to play a different position, you know, in high school than college. So don't worry about that. College coaches are used to looking at film, knowing your skill set, and saying, hey, I think we can make, make them play. That's a video recording. Absolutely, Chris. Everyone who signs up for a recruiting class is going to get a follow-up email from that class of the recording. So, Chris, yes, you will get a video recording of this class today, too. Brandon, to get a scholarship for two sports. It certainly is. Now, 
the hood decreases the higher division level because you know football in the division one that's 365 days a year obviously we go down to division two it's a little less strenuous division three a little less strenuous so it's not as common in the higher division level is it possible absolutely most student athletes though they'll only select one sport to play that'll be it for example terrell Pryor, he's a guy who grew up pretty close to me he had offers to play basketball all across the country and offers to play football he decided to play football in college so it is possible to receive multiple scholarships but the higher the division level you play there Jaden, the less likely it is you'll play multiple sports help buddy Question: question do we ever get an email of the video if we miss the class yes you even get an email if you miss the class so as long as you guys sign up for the class even if you attend it or you sit it you will automatically get a video recording of the class so little trick guys if you know you're really interested in the class but you know you're not available sign up for it. you'll get a video recording and you guys can rewatch it when you are available great question Jay, you can get an, a scholarship for football only, but still do track and field. Jay, that's possible. Now, track, track is usually the one sport that football coaches are the most lenient to allow student athletes to play. It's the exact opposite season of football, which is the good news. It's also at least contact on the body, so coaches are less worried you'll get injured. And then, of course, the training of track, working for you to improve your speed, translates well to football. So it is possible to do it. Not every coach is super lenient with it, though. It, it is going to vary school to school. What is the minimum GPA for all, all, all college divisions? Well, here's the thing, Cody. So the minimum GPA for the NCAA for you to be eligible is a 2.5. That said, each university is going to have completely different minimums. So people like Stanford and Harvard, obviously minimums are going to be much harder than a small school like Louisiana College or Mount Union or other schools. While the 2.5 is the minimum for the NCAA, each university is different. So my recommendation, Cody, is if you know the schools you're interested in, make sure you research ahead of time what their minimum GPA is, because that's going to completely change from school to school. A specific question I have to do is I'm going to I'm going to chat you the answer of what I think it is. Uh, I don't want to kind of put you on on blast like this, so I'm just going to shoot you the uh, the follow up text email or in that message right here. How, what will they send scholarships in? All right, great question here, Jaden. So usually when schools send, when send scholarships, uh, what they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and they'll send you an email or they might send you a text. A lot of college coaches, the way they prefer to do it is vocally. So they'll do it over the phone, they'll do it in person. That's kind of the, the way that they prefer to do it. And usually they'll send you follow-up information. On homework there, bud. Glad you glad you enjoyed this call. What else are questions you got?
Jay, some good ones tonight here. If you get a scholarship from a college and choose that college, will you pay for your football gear except in high school, correct? So that athletic apparel and things like that, that will be covered by the university, yes. Now, within reason, too, you're not going to be able to get 15 pairs of gloves. Usually they'll have a minimum that you'll be able to get, like maybe one pair of gloves for, this, for these and things like that. But, yeah, they'll pay for your gear. Could be moving to another school. How will that work with the program? So if we transfer high schools, guys, it's not a big deal for us at NCSA. All you'll need to do is just update your profile so that, those, so that college coaches obviously know where they can contact you. So not a big deal if we transfer high schools. Brandon, I'm glad I was able to help. help Moving forward, buddy. Junior colleges from Cody. So from junior colleges, can their requ uh, required GPA be lower than 2.5? Yes, they can. So their GPA is just going to say as long as student athlete graduated from high school, he's eligible to play for us at a junior college. But what that'll mean then, Cody, is you then will need to go to junior college for two years, graduate with your associate's degree, and then transfer to a four-year university. What other questions you got floating around and might be able to help you with today? For the full tiers, you can't just transfer after the one. All right, so Cody, let's say for, for junior colleges, there are two ways that you can transfer out. If you are a student athlete who is below a 2.5 cumulative GPA, below the minimum 18 on the ACT, then go to the junior college for two years, just degree, and then transfer out. If you're an athlete above a 2.5 and above an 18 on the ACT, then you go for one year and transfer out. Or actually, you can go for one semester and transfer to a four-year school. So, Cody, based on what your academics is, to be honest with you, Cody, since this is really, really specific, my best suggestion for you, bud, Give us a call at 877-845-6272, and we can kind of walk you personally through that, because when we start talking about the junior college process, it's a case-by-case case different, different for every student athlete. So again, Cody, our, our number here is 877-845-672. Just give us a call. We can probably talk more specifically with you, because that's going to be more beneficial for you, buddy. to send you a scholarship after you graduate. Jaden, scholarships are going to come during your high school year. They're not really going to come after you graduate. After they graduate, they're going to move on to the next graduation class. Our questions we got. Good luck dinner. Hope you get something good. I'll give you a 20 second warning here. If anyone's got any questions, you can fire them in right now. I'll set up for this evening. My big suggestion for you guys moving forward, take advantage of these recruiting classes. 
You have unlimited access to them regardless of what your membership is. You get on as many of these as you want. You're paid a large financial investment CSA, and we want to make sure they get that return on investment. My suggestion for you guys is plan on taking one recruiting class a month, and you can pick which class you want. But if you're doing one a month, guys, you're going to get a lot of knowledge. Best of luck to you guys moving forward, and hope all is well. Take care, guys.